Want all the fun of Halloween but without the nightmares? Here are 10 spooky games suitable for scaredy cats. Scary games are all well and good, but what if you want all the slime, sweets and scarecrows of Halloween but without the nerve-shredding terror? What if you prefer the Adams Family to the Bakers? Well, that's where this list comes in, a collection of gently spooky titles we promise are more trick than treat. Whether it's candy grabbing, dress up RPGs or hardcore horror games with easy modes, these are the titles that put the care in scare. Does that make sense? No. Regardless, here are the best Halloween horror games you can enjoy even if you're afraid of your own shadow. Our first entry is Haunt the House Terror Town, a game about possessing inanimate objects to horrify hapless strangers. Yes, it sounds terrifying, but just look at it. Playing as possibly one of the most adorable ghosts of all time, you can turn a fun train ride into true horror, or even ruin Christmas for a party of unsuspecting festive revellers. Everything can be possessed and played with, and as the atmosphere gets more tense and more poor cartoon souls have lost their senses and run off screaming, you'll unlock new, even more fun actions for different items. Cackling with glee is absolutely optional. So if you fancy a game where you're causing the nightmares rather than receiving them, Haunt the House is exactly the right flavour of candy corn terror. Louise, do not touch me when I'm making great content. We've talked about this. That's not my hand. Of course it's your hand. It's horrible and clammy. Our next game for anyone who loves a gentle scare is Hideo Kojima's P.T. It's no, stop. P what are you talking about? P.T. is terrifying. What about a jelly baby? Oh, that's not a jelly baby. And P.T. isn't even on PC. Did you change the script? Let me just read words. <sighs> Fine. Sorry. I've got this one. So we are going to talk about another haunted house. But again, this time it's you at the scary helm and not, well, not jelly babies. 2003's Ghostmaster is a blast from the past, but still manages to be ridiculously good fun as you put together a crew of haunters to make the lives of human beings an utter misery. It's retro and plays on a veritable bathful of ice of teen horror tropes, but Ghostmaster is enjoyably complex as you harness certain ghosts to certain rooms and make the most of their unique powers. Oh, sorry. Not sorry. Hmm. Something doesn't feel quite right. I'm going to go and check the script. Whatever. I still think PT works. Our next entry is Little Nightmares, which I realise is an odd choice for a video that we promised wouldn't give you nightmares. Little Nightmares is slightly creepy, it's true, but at its heart, it's a puzzle platformer, not a survival horror game. There's also some stealth involved as you journey sideways through this unsettling world as the brightly jacketed six. It's mildly chilling rather than outright terrifying, but you can still expect some pleasant goosebumps as you creep about. There are all kinds of collectibles to find too, so you'll constantly be heading in the wrong direction just to see what scary things you can uncover. Hmm. Look at the state of this script. Someone must really not like Matt's jokes. Really not like them. White fur. We haven't had Monty in the office in ages, and he's brown. What? Someone likes their iced coffee more like a glacier than a slushy. They must really have serious chill. Speaking of scary things to uncover, it looks like we've got a mystery to solve. time to tell you about a game a bit like Stardew Valley, but with added embalming. Yes, we're going to talk about Graveyard Keeper. Meanwhile, I'm going to go in here. It'll probably be fine. Graveyard Keeper sounds grim. It really does. You carry corpses into your morgue, strip them of flesh, which you may or may not sell to the tavern as meat to make sweet cashola, and even make wax candles out of the cadavers on your slab. And 
and yet it looks bright. There's a satisfying graveyard upkeep system, and what's more fun than carrying out the wishes of your bouncing skull friend? You can even farm, cook, and spend your days just making life better for everyone. well-made gaming keyboard with G-Hub. What a relief. <sighs> so, Graveyard Keeper is actually lovely and bright. Until you start thinking about the hands of the lifeless corpses and the sound of the teeth inside a bouncing skull. Next, we have The Walking Dead, a telltale storytelling triumph that reminds us how humans can be more frightening than monsters. You're unusually quiet, Louise. Something wrong? No zombie puns? Right, while I can get a word in edgeways without anyone harping on about being undead right all the time, I can delve into the adventures of Clementine and Lee. The first season of Telltale's masterpiece is a shockingly tense exercise in narrative design. While the shambling zombies are, of course, a problem, it's your decisions that matter the most here. Who do you save? Who gets the last supplies? Do zombies get indigestion? Every choice in The Walking Dead hurts, and that's exactly what makes it so good. Louise will remember that, yeah? Like like the telltale thing, like you'll remember that, yeah? Hey, hey? Oh, uh. <gasps> Where have you been? You are a naughty severed extremity. Our next entry is Oxenfree, a heartfelt coming of age adventure that teaches us important lessons about the true nature of friendship. Perhaps the scariest bit in the earliest sections of Oxenfree is the social awkwardness, the strained friendships, the concealed emotional baggage, the desperate need for acceptance. Brent. Uh huh. Come on, fess up. You want to go out with Nona, right? Clarissa! Wait, wait, wait! I want to hear his answer. But as the game progresses and you uncover the truth about Edwards Island, it changes from teen drama into a supernatural horror. It's also brilliantly written with a dialogue system that allows conversations to flow as naturally as any TV show. There's a slow sense of building dread here rather than outright scares, making it a vivid, relatable throwback to a time when the worst thing imaginable was being ignored by your friends. That reminds me. I wonder where Louise is. Look at you. Look at you go. Oh. Hello. I can't believe you. You left me tied up in a storeroom. You walked right past me to get to this guy. You thought I was a mop. Right, next up, we've got Soma. You can watch that. We have a monster to catch. A monster that definitely exists. 
Speaking of monsters that might probably definitely exist, Fractional Game Soma is almost certainly the scariest game on this list. Suddenly waking up in an underwater facility full of hissing pipes and hideous monsters definitely isn't for the faint of heart. Especially since this is from the same people that made Amnesia The Dark Descent the source of some of the most terrifying moments in PC gaming. So why is it on this list? Because the release of Soma's safe mode means everyone can enjoy the subnautical but nice fun no matter how scared they are. Switch this mode on and the monsters can't hurt you, letting you soak up the creepy atmosphere without having to hide under desks. Does it turn the game into a thigh-slapping lark? Almost certainly not, but if you're looking to take a step into the world of horror, Soma's safe mode is like stabilizers for a horrible bike. So what we're saying is that playing Soma in story mode isn't nice, but won't actually kill you. A bit like this trap, assuming it works. Of course it's going to work, it's really simple. The monster just pulls the bell, which moves the chair, which activates Spatulax, who turns on Hands Grabber, looks for one of our great videos on YouTube while he's distracted, you knock him out with your Kung Fu, and we'll all be home in time for a nice cup of tea and some Yakuza Zero. Oh my god, Louise, you're fine. Oh, I thought we got you for a moment back there. Huh? I am not a mop. Your trap was terrible. And we will catch this Yeti if it kills me. I totally meant to do that. This is what happens when you tie me up in a stock room, when you mess with my scripts, you Yeti, snowman, carpet thing. <sighs> well, speaking of terrible costumes, here's the next entry. If you haven't already had the delights of Costume Quest 2, it's about as happy Halloween creepy as a delicious toffee apple with some slightly scary eyes. Whether you play as Ren or Reynold, this adorable RPG sees you saving Halloween from the nefarious Dr. Oral White, a maniacal dentist, which is the worst kind, intent on ruining the holiday for candy-loving kids everywhere. And, of course, it also involves collecting as much trick-or-treat candy as humanly possible without being ludicrously sick. The turn-based RPG elements are an inventive touch, and if you want to get the glowing green feel of Halloween without any of the scares, Costume Quest 2 is the perfect door to knock on. Oh, and of course you can collect costumes, because Halloween wouldn't be Halloween without costumes. Well, of course, it's Old Man Wilkins and he's been changing our script because he wants to keep everyone scared. No, it's someone raising awareness about the unethical treatment of yetis in games. Think about Red Dead, Enough, Cry, enough, Sasquatch. enough, enough. Let's just take the mask off and find out who it is. So that's it, the best games for Halloween scaredy cats, amidst an only gently terrifying mystery of our very own. Let us know your favourite non-scary, scary games in the comments below, drop us a like if you enjoyed Matt as Fred, and subscribe to Logitech G for more videos and features. Oh, and if you do already subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell to make sure you know when the next video lands, like something that definitely isn't scary. Oh, and happy Halloween.